Okay, so the camera that I have, it, I don't know, it shuts down or it stops after 25 minutes, I think, and I take a long time because I, I talk a lot. I talk about interesting stuff, so I get motivated and I keep talking because I feel as if I was teaching this stuff. It's pretty interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna have to make more than one video and then unite them at the end and make a big video and publish it back. So, okay, I was talking about the, yeah, the, the unicorns and my tennis example, my tennis practice example. By the way, I, I uploaded a video in my YouTube channel about one of, my, one of my tennis practices. It's not that great, you know? I, I still have a long way to go to get better at that, but uh, you know, if, if anyone has any recommendation or if you can learn from what I have already learned so far, congratulations and you're welcome. You can, you can see what I have learned, maybe learn something from it. If you are way ahead of me, you can also recommend me something. So, yeah, let's, let's go on to the next one because I have a lot, I have a lot here to talk about. So number five is uh, page 181, 181. She wondered if one reason she and Lightfoot got along so well was because they were both young, both young. Well, young isn't exactly the right word, thought Kara. Okay, let's see what I wrote here. Beings with similar perspectives of life or in life make better friends. <laughs> they fit better. They they understand each other better. The reason why why Kara and this Lightfoot unicorn are you know a better combination, better friends than she and any of the other unicorns is because they have more in common in their age, in their youthfulness, in their vision of the world, and in the way they are even. I think that maybe Lightfoot is a little more brave than her for sure, but they, they fit well as, as friends. And it's like that, not just in the story here in the book, but, but in real life. In, in real life, you have a better connection, you fit better, with someone that has more in common with you. It doesn't have to be the age. Sometimes you, you know someone that has your same age and they don't have anything in common with you, so you, you don't make a connection. You don't make a, a, a deep connection, a meaningful connection. Uh, how can I call it? Satisfying connection. You two are too different. So you cannot make that connection. And if you make it, ugh, it can end. It can end not too well because you're too different from each other. You, you, in your way of thinking, don't share anything. You have to share something to be able to become great friends, to be able to become even more of that. You, you have to share something, something deep. It doesn't have to be everything, but it should be something um, meaningful in some way. Uh, okay, so let's see, number six. Okay, so for all the use you'll be, Mother Bell about Finder, uh, fighting isn't the only way to be of help, said Finder gently. So yeah, judging, judging people based on only one facet or one, one category of their personality or only based on one thing that they can do or only based on one thing that they did either right or wrong. Um, you have to judge people on several things that you're seeing from them, that you know about them, not just one, on several things. Because, you know, sometimes the most useful individual, the most useful person, was not useful at something in particular. That doesn't mean that they do great in, in the other stuff. So you, you have to look at the big picture. You have to look at, at everything from the individual to to be able to to make a much more clear judgment, you know? Okay, so when you're very good at something, this is what I wrote here, you think that's the way to go. Oh, and also the bias, personal bias, because that's 
that's what you know, that's your way of thinking, so we, we tend to be biased, always, based on how we are, based on how, how we have uh, grown, what we have learned, we're biased, that's the way it is. So when you're very good at something, you think that's the way to go, but sometimes it's not. Better solution may be uh, brought by another route. You have to be open-minded to be able to see all, all the other routes, even the ones that didn't come to you right away naturally, because you know, you, you're more likely to think about something else first. Okay, so number seven, 192. 192. 192. See? Uh, oh, yes. This is, I think this is probably beloved. Not when they met in person, but when she met sort of like the, this dream like beloved. So Beloved tells her that there's no point in fighting me, child. Blood calls to blood, and you are my blood, my many times great granddaughter. So come to me. This, this is wrong because you know blood calls to blood. You tend to feel a connection, and you want to help your family members, especially if they are close family members. Like your, your parents, your brothers, sisters, if you have a daughter or a son, you obviously care about them. But there's one exception where blood doesn't call to blood, and you may even have a friend that you care much more about and that matters to you much more. The exception is when the relative, even if it's a close relative, like, like a mother, like a father, like an uncle, doesn't matter who it is, close relative has never been there, you didn't develop any love for that individual. You, you don't feel anything for that individual. So even if that individual comes back and ends up being good, you won't be able to love them. It's, I don't know, unless you're a softy, I am not. So I, I know this from self-experience, by the way. When there's someone, even if they're a good person, that comes back to your life after many, many years and you feel like you don't know them, well, you don't know them because they were never there. Even if they do everything to gain your love, the only thing that they may be able to gain, if you're a good person, is your friendship, but not your love. That love cannot be gained because you have the the same blood ties because you, you are related. It's something that has to be built with time, with trust, with actions, with, you know, over and over and over and over again. If you break it, too bad. It's, it's one of those things that takes a long time to build. It's easy to break, but if it keeps building and building and building and getting stronger, it's, you know, a big structure, strong, amazing structure, probably one of the best uh, bonds that we can possibly make in life if we manage to find it because finding this is pretty difficult <laughs> I know from self-experience it, it takes a lot it takes probably finding someone that thinks a lot like you someone that is it's almost and I don't want to say a twin mind because it doesn't have to be like that but uh, you yeah. know someone that really has a, a mentality and a lifestyle that fits with yours Okay, so let's see, number eight. Number eight. So what page is it? 198. As Kara moved into the rhythm of the day, she noticed again how differently time seemed to pass in the wild. In the cities where she had lived, it was frantic, divided into little chunks. Here it seemed to roll on more smoothly. Okay, so let me read you what I wrote. Time is the same everywhere on Earth, but the way it feels to you depends on where you live and what you do daily. So your, your lifestyle will determine 
the way you feel about time and how you perceive it. So time is behaving the same way everywhere in Earth, but you won't perceive it the same way, you won't feel it is the same depending on your situation. You may feel that time is running too fast for you, you may feel that time is running very slow, you're bored. If, if, if you are very engaged and you have many, many, many things to do, a lot of work to do, that like me pretty much, time, there are not enough hours in a day basically to do everything you want to do. If you are in a position like mine, um, but uh, time is still behaving the same way for me as for the guy that feels the complete opposite. It's the same way for the one that is too busy and the one that is not, but the, the, the perception of the mind and the fact that they're very busy or not busy at all is what's making all the difference. Uh, so it's, you know, it's kind of psychological if you think about it. Um, okay, number nine. So number nine is page 212. Page 212. Okay, so page 212, there are many things I have that the Delvers would like to possess. So this is the tinker talking, the guy with all the watches and all the, you know, the gimmicks and, you know, it's a pretty useful character. So the Delvers would like to possess tools, spells, knowledge. Oh no, this is Magama. This is not the Tinker. The Tinker says something similar later on in the book. This is the Geomancer Magama. So the Delvers would like to, to have her tools and her knowledge. So let me see what I wrote for that. So tools and knowledge can make all the difference. Even more than IQ or genetics in some cases. In some cases, the tools that you have at your disposal and the knowledge that you have can make an even bigger difference than your IQ, how smart you are, and your genetics. So, you know what? Because they make an advantage. The, the tools, if you have the tools to make things easier for you, you have an advantage. If you have the knowledge to make things easier for you, you're not necessarily smarter than someone else. But if that someone else doesn't have the tools and doesn't have the knowledge, even if they are way smarter, they're gonna have it harder. They're gonna have more difficulty. So having the right tools and the right knowledge, in many cases, can, can give you a bigger advantage than a little more intelligence and better genetics because the, the tools and the knowledge, but that, that's combined by the way, because the tools were created because of knowledge. You know how to make those tools. If you don't know how to make the tools, you are not gonna have the tools. Really make a huge difference. That's, that, that's an idea that I have for one of my science fiction stories for the series in, in my website, uh, authorpedrocristobal.wordpress.com which I might change by taking out the, the WordPress and putting that combo for now, I'm gonna keep it that way. In there, in the tab that says original stories, I am making a, a science fiction series which is called Project H. This idea is, is in that series. And it is a big idea. If you have the right tools and the right knowledge, you, you can do more. You can get things done better and faster even if you're not necessarily smarter, or if your genetics are not wonderful, but the, the, tools, the tools and the knowledge make all the difference for a living being. Not having the tools and not having the knowledge, it is all the difference between being in the caveman years, you know, the dark ages, or being today with, with uh, technology and all the things that we have. It makes all the difference. So 10, so the other things also help. It's not that they don't help. They help if you got good genetics or if you have more intelligence. But uh, you know, after those things are already there and the tools have been created, you need to use the tools as well to be able to do better. So number 10, 
219. So she closed her eyes to see if it made any difference in the quality of the darkness. It didn't. The work was equally black anyway. Okay, so this is one of those examples of me thinking too much, but I come up with good ideas, so that's a good thing. And I came up with this because I read this, this sentence in this story in this book. So 219. So knowing is always prefer preferable, in my opinion, to not knowing. Even if what you find out isn't good or great or wonderful, at least you're more aware of the truth. And for me, for me at least, knowing the truth is the way to go. If you're dealing with something and you don't know the truth, you may not be making the best choices to deal with that something because you don't know. But if you're dealing with something and you know the whole truth, even if it is a good truth, even if it is a truth that you wish it wasn't that way, doesn't matter, you're better equipped to deal with that. Because now you know exactly what you're dealing with. So this is kind of like, like from the Matrix, you know, Matrix style. I prefer knowing the truth, even if it is a more difficult truth, but it's, it's